ratio of x squared plus one, okay? And must be less than one all over, okay? Well, it must be less than one over, well, if we can find this number that's smaller than x squared plus one, we'll have the fact that this is actually less than one over whatever number we divide over here. And what we've chosen is we've chosen a third, so it must be, it must be less than a third, which implies that x minus zero over x squared plus one must be less than must be less than three. But look at this. From our choice, from our choice of delta, our choice of delta, okay, we have, well, delta is the min of these two. We have that one must be less than three times epsilon, which implies that a third is less than is less than is less than epsilon. If that makes sense. Okay, so that implies well that implies that a third is less that toward is less than is a toward is, is 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 less is less than epsilon. Okay. Uh, now maybe have I made a little bit of a boo boo here? Maybe I have made a bit of a maybe I've made a bit of a boo boo. Uh, didn't didn't didn't. So if we multiply. The, oh, sorry. Well, I have actually made a little bit of a, an error here. Isn't that right? Okay. Is that what we should have actually chosen here? Okay. Is from this particular fact here, okay, uh, this actually is, should be saying is that not that x minus zero is less than three times epsilon, whoops, that's actually epsilon over three, okay, that x minus zero is less than epsilon over three, because when I multiply across by a third on both sides, the thirds cancel out, uh, which would leave me a third times epsilon, which is epsilon over three. So actually, this should be, instead of three times epsilon, this should be epsilon over three, which means this is epsilon over three, right? Um, so what we now have is this, is ignore that. So from our choice, sorry, from our choice of delta, okay, uh, we have, from our choice of delta, okay, we have that one must be less than epsilon over three, which implies, now there we go, that three must be less than epsilon. So what we now have here is this, is that this now implies this implies okay, that x minus 0 over x squared plus 1 must be less than 3, which is less than epsilon. So that must be less than epsilon as required. So what have we done? We've taken the fact, we've taken our premise, which is of the form x minus a is less than delta. And we've reduced it down to something that looks like f of x. Okay? It looks like f of x minus, minus l is less than epsilon. Don't forget this is the same as this thing here, okay? It's the same as the absolute value of x over x squared plus one, the absolute value of that, okay? Minus zero, okay, okay? Is, is less than epsilon. What about case two? So when we consider case two, uh, well, case two is where we say that delta, delta is equal to epsilon over three, is the min, okay? So when delta is equal to epsilon over three is in the min. So let's do this. So we need to take any epsilon greater than zero. And uh, well then for each and every X satisfying, satisfying the condition uh, that zero is less than X minus zero is less than delta, okay? Uh, delta is, is going to be <clears throat> epsilon over three epsilon over three. Well, what does this imply? This implies that the absolute value of x minus zero is less than epsilon over three, okay? Uh, which implies that the absolute value of x minus zero all over x squared plus one must be less than epsilon over three divided by, we're gonna divide this by a number that's smaller than x squared plus one. And we know a number that's smaller than x squared plus one, it's one, any number less than one. And what we've chosen is to divide it by divided by a third, okay? Uh, so what this implies that x minus zero over x squared plus one is less than, is less than epsilon. And that's as required. So once again, what we've shown here is this, is this is our premise, okay? Uh, this is the fact that zero is less than x minus a is less than delta. And what we've shown is, well, once again, this is the same as, uh, the absolute value of x over x squared plus one is less than, less than epsilon. 
a little bit of a boo-boo I made there in that particular proof. Uh, geez, wow, I should have really uh, been more uh, had uh, been more aware of that. There is that. <laughs> this isn't just yeah. So this isn't. Uh, well, not this thing here is <laughs> is not is not three times epsilon. It's actually epsilon over three. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, once again, this is Jonathan Lambert with uh, Maths and Stats. Uh, this was another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus and limits and in particular epsilon delta proofs. Looking at an, an unusual, not an unusual rational function, but a function that, that had a different quality compared to the previous questions that we had. In the, the difference being is that when we looked at the restriction, okay, when we restricted uh, the absolute value associated with the premise, Okay, that what we ended up with is we ended up with an inequality that was a half open interval or half closed interval. It was closed below and it was open above. Uh, and it was important to take that into, into consideration that we needed a number less than x squared plus 1. But the number less than x squared plus 1 wouldn't be 1 because that's actually equal to it. But it's a number smaller than that. So any number smaller than 1 would have sufficed in this case uh, to help us to find an appropriate delta. Okay, guys, once again, uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming along and watching this. I hope this video was intuitive and more importantly, I hope that was helpful to you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.